for breakfast, I'm going to be making some berry pancakes. So in the batter, I just have a cup of the Kodiak cakes, which is a pancake mix that has protein in it. I have a half a teaspoon of ashwagandha powder just to help with recovery and it's a stress adaptogen, so that's just a superfood I add in. Another superfood I add in is a teaspoon of maca powder. And then I put in about a third a cup of frozen blueberries. You could use fresh, but I like to buy blueberries when they're on sale and then just stick the whole container in the freezer. So that's what's in the batter. One of the tricks I use with pancakes is I get the pan pretty hot and then I turn the heat down. So I'll hit it with some oil. <clears throat> and then drop in the batter. This amount of batter will make three pretty large pancakes. So while the pancakes are cooking, I have a little cast iron skillet over here that I'm gonna cook some eggs in. I have three egg whites and one egg yolk, just, well, one whole egg, mixed with some salt and pepper. As these cook, you can just like pop the bubble and kind of start moving the sides in towards the middle. So the pancakes are ready to flip when you can easily lift from one of the edges. I just spray the other side really quick with some oil. Then to flip, I use a spatula and a fork. So I come in and lift up the pancake and then push it onto the spatula and flip it. So to flip the eggs, I'm gonna turn the heat down a little at this point. All right, so the eggs are a little tricky to flip, especially in this little pan, but I just grab one side, kind of flip it over like an omelet almost, and then move it towards the other side and then pull it. And then it's just a nice little cake. All right, so when the pancakes are done, to plate these, I'm gonna be using about a teaspoon of coconut oil on each, so that comes out to a tablespoon for the whole stack. And then instead of syrup on these, I'm just gonna use some reduced sugar jelly. You could use strawberry, blueberry, grape, whatever kind of jelly you wanted. And again, I'm just gonna put about, about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more of this on each one. So that goes between each pancake and then just repeat the process. The last thing to go on these is just a teaspoon of Asahi powder. So this is Asahi berry dried. Again, just another superfood to add in, goes on top and that makes it a triple berry. And then the eggs should be done at this point. I just flip them out of the pan. And then I just have some, about a cup of unsweetened soy milk with it. So it's a big meal, but at the same time, it's actually not that high in carbs. You save some carbs with the, with the jelly instead of syrup. And then also just the Kodiak cakes aren't that high in carbohydrates. So it's a big meal, but the macros are actually really good. All right, so I weighed in this morning at 187.8. Very happy with that. It means that I've sort of leveled off now and I'm kind of in a more regular gaining pace. The thing is, I had some trouble eating this week. I had a little bit of anxiety. I felt kind of stressed, a little bit off. And when that happens, my appetite drops. So I decided to listen to my body. I skipped a couple small meals here and there. I probably missed about a thousand, maybe 1200 calories last week that I was supposed to intake for my macros. I miss those meals, and but it's fine. I needed to listen to my body and when I'm not feeling hungry, it's okay to sometimes skip smaller portions. Overall though, I tried to power through it and still eat as much as I could and it's good. I'm at a good gaining pace now. From last week to this week, I feel better. I don't feel so like bloated and, and full. So this past week of training, I had 
amazing strength gains. It was it was really promising because I was kind of struggling in my head with a little bit of self doubt. I was feeling like, you know, am I doing the right things? I train so hard. I train all these hours. Like, is it really paying off? Is it really working? Am I going to get stronger this fall? Like all this BS that you hear in your head when you do bodybuilding and training, it's, it's ridiculous sometimes. Maybe it's just me, but I struggle with self-doubt. So one of the things I want to talk about really quick is the benefit of having numbers and being able to turn that BS voice in your head off. So these are my training journals. This was the first one I ever started with. It was for women. That's okay. It's no big deal. And then <laughs> I progressively completed book after book of all of my workouts. So going back to 2016, I have my very first tracked workouts. Now, at the time, I wasn't yet that like experienced, I guess you could say, but I was to the point where I wasn't even writing down the date. So I literally, that's why I don't know my exact starting date for my training, but it is around, like, <laughs> I found this date here for my initial measurements of May of 2016. So that's when I consider myself to have really started training and tracking and logging. So what's awesome about having the training journals is like, this is my most current one. And as I'm working through things, I am able to really see if I'm progressing. Now, I've talked about this before. I'll probably talk about it again because it's such a big deal. Like when you're when you're doubting that what you're doing is working, grab your training journals and sit down and have a moment with them. So by going back, I saw my, you know, my initial strength numbers. And it's really promising when you can you can literally go back and you can know, okay, you know, when I started bench pressing, the max weight that I was able to push was 50 pounds. So pretty much the bar. That was my strong set. Now, of course, that quickly progressed, but there's days currently where I'm under the bench and I'm thinking, wow, you know, you can only, you can only press 155, you can only press 165, like, you're so weak. And I'm just being honest, sometimes I'm really mean to myself. So when I hear that kind of stuff in my head, I know it's time to reflect. And I go back and I look at my strength numbers from when I started and I realize, okay, you know, I've been able to put 50 pounds a year on my bench in the past couple years. Yes, maybe that's not a number to do a backflip over. Maybe, of course, there's always going to be somebody that's stronger, but I still was able to make that progress. And that's a big deal. So by having the numbers and always being able to go back, doesn't matter the movement, deadlift, shoulder press, barbell curl, whatever it is, if you're sitting there in the gym today and you're thinking, oh, I wish I was able to lift more or, oh, look what that, what that person can lift, go back and look at your own numbers and realize, no, like, you're doing better, you're progressing, and that's what matters. So I'm going to see Avengers Endgame and I heard it's three hours long and I'm like, there's no way that I'm not going to have to pee at least two to three times in, <laughs> in between that movie. And then secondly, I'm going to have to eat something there. So I'm probably going to get ready and go grab a snack because there's no way I'm going to sit through a three hour movie without like something to eat. And I'm not going to eat movie theater popcorn. That's insane.
right, so it's about 3.30 and I'm gonna have a late lunch because I was at the movie, but this is just some of the fake chicken strips, one and a half servings, some green beans and carrots, and a cup of rice, and then just a quarter cup of 2% Greek yogurt and a little bit of barbecue sauce. Super simple lunch since I already had, I had two like protein bars during the movie and like a kombucha, so this is my more, my lunch. Good movie though, I'm happy I went. I got the last seat left in my showing, so that was good. I didn't have to wait around forever to see see the movie, but three hours of, of good action-packed goodness. So, but now it's late and I'm gonna eat and try to get re-energized for the second part of my day. I'm feeling so tired <laughs> after that because it's like the middle of the day and it has been in the 70s this past week and now it is 34 degrees and snowing so I'm just gonna diffuse some peppermint oil and wake myself up okay so this is one of those days I'm definitely struggling <laughs> to feel psyched up to go work out but I know I'm gonna feel better once I get in there and I start lifting and my blood's flowing and everything's going good. Plus, today isn't a big strength day. It's more of a hypertrophy day. So it's a long workout I have planned. It's a doozy, but it's not going to be real stressful, big, heavy lifts. So I'm gonna take you through today's workout. It's gonna be a progression of shoulders, triceps, and biceps. All right, so I'm gonna make my way to the gym, go out in this snow. Yes, it's snowing here. And take you through this workout. I like to start each of my workouts just with a 10 minute warm up on the treadmill. This is like a moderate, easy pace. I'm just walking to get some blood flow through my body and warm up. The first exercise for today's workout is just a warm up rear delt fly on the machine. You can see that I'm not doing a huge range of motion. I'm really focusing on just firing my rear delt muscles. This is going to bring some blood flow into the shoulders and help warm them up before I go into heavier movements. For these I'm aiming to hit 15 to 20 reps for each set and I'm going to do 4 sets of these. You don't have to go very heavy on these at all, it's more about warming up that muscle and really making sure you're hitting the rear delt. Next movement that I'm gonna do for shoulders is the dumbbell overhead press. So this first set is just a warm up set. I picked a weight that I can easily do 12 to 15 reps of. The second set of the dumbbell overhead press is another warm up set. So you wanna choose a weight you can do 10 to 15 reps of. And take a note of how my back is against the bench, but I'm not leaned far back on an incline. This will help keep the pressure on my shoulders and off my upper chest. Now that my shoulders are nice and warmed up, I'm moving into two heavy sets of dumbbell presses. So this is a weight that I can perform at six to maybe eight reps max. I wanna do good form here, nice and slow, and controlled. The most difficult part of doing the heavy sets is getting the weight up in the air. So you can see that I have the bench at a little bit more of an incline for these. That way I can get the weight up easier, but once I'm my back is against the rest, I have my head pushed forward. So I'm not fully leaning back on the bench. After the heavy sets, I moved into two working sets of eight to 10 reps. Dumbbell press was the bigger strength movement for the shoulders. What I'm gonna use for the strength movement on the triceps is the close grip bench press. I'm just warming up, getting used to the rhythm just with the bar, and I highly recommend that just to start 
getting into the rhythm of the wraps and how they feel. Once I feel like everything's set up in the right spot, I have the guards at the right height, I feel good in the movement, then I start with a warm up set. So this is a set where I should be able to hit 12 to 15 reps easily and with good form. I added a little more weight to the bar and I'm going to do another warm up set of 10 to 12. You can see that I go pretty slow on the negative of the movement. I'm really trying to feel out my triceps and making sure that I'm engaging them versus my chest. Now that my triceps are nice and warmed up, I'm gonna move into two heavy sets of the close grip bench press, really looking for six to eight reps here. Again, nice and slow, especially when you start to go heavier so that your form doesn't break. You'll notice that I use a little bit of a wider grip than most when I'm doing the close grip bench press. I found that this grip for me puts less strain on my wrists. Wearing wrist wraps can help too, but I found that this just takes the pressure off my wrists and I still feel the movement in my triceps. So play around with your, with your hand width and see what feels good for you. To finish up on the close grip bench press, I'm doing two working sets. So this is in the eight to 10 rep range. At this point, your triceps are gonna start to feel a little bit fatigued. So if you need to drop the weight, drop the weight, but I'm trying to stay within a good rep range for hypertrophy. The dumbbell lateral raise is going to be the first exercise in the first superset. So now I'm coming back to shoulders and doing more of an isolated movement to really have time under tension. These are going to be in the 12 to 15 rep range. And then after this exercise, I'm gonna go right into hammer curls. After about a 10 second rest, then I go right into the hammer curls after the dumbbell lateral raise. So this is both arms at one time standing, looking at doing a 10 to 12 rep range for these hammer curls. At this point in the workout, I'm already really filling up with blood and getting a super good pump. Especially after doing that superset, all of a sudden now I'm getting a lot of blood rush into my arms. I'm going to repeat that superset two more times for a total of three supersets of the dumbbell lateral raise and the hammer curls. I like to use hammer curls because they activate the forearms. So it helps build a thicker forearm while, while you're still working your biceps. So I'm swinging just a little bit here, but really what I'm doing is I'm pausing at the bottom of the movement, stabilizing my body, and then quickly curling up. My form is not perfect on dumbbell lateral raises, but it has really improved. I try to just focus on if I'm actually feeling it in my shoulders. And one of the things that has helped me is to keep my arms slightly bent and think of raising my elbows to the ceiling. On exercises like hammer curls, dumbbell curls, barbell curls, I really like to focus on going slow on the negative. This gives me more time under tension, basically ups the ante of the reps, increases the intensity of the exercise. The next superset in the workout is going to focus on triceps and then biceps using unilateral movements. So I'm alternating between a single arm exercise. The first exercise here is the single arm overhead tricep extension with a dumbbell. After doing the tricep extensions on the right and left arm, then I'm going to move into bicep concentration curls against the bench. So this is the second exercise in this superset, you do them directly after the tricep extensions. And for both exercises, I'm looking to stay within a 10 to 15 rep range. At this point, I'm not really focused on just hitting a certain amount of reps but basically going up until the point of failure. 
For these tricep extensions, I'm using a pretty light weight because I'm focusing on keeping the upper section of my arm stationary and really using my tricep to push and then contract at the top of the movement. So pick a lighter weight that you can really focus on form with. It, it shouldn't be about swinging. You want the tricep to be doing the work. The same goes for the dumbbell concentration curls. I want to be doing at least 12 to 15 on each arm, and I want the movement to be very slow. I'm focused on really feeling the bicep, especially at the top when I'm contracting and squeezing at the very top of the rep. After completing three supersets of the overhead tricep press and the concentrated dumbbell curl, I then went into a giant set. So the first exercise in this giant set is an alternating cable lat raise. This is sometimes called the Egyptian lat raise, but I like it because it puts pressure on the shoulder on both the upward phase of the movement and then also the negative of the movement. So you're constantly under tension. Again, this is a unilateral movement, so first I'm doing the right arm and then I'm switching to my left arm. My foot goes over the cable and then the cable ends up between my legs, which is nice because then you get a clear path of movement with the cable. Directly after the alternating cable lat raise, I'm going into a tricep pushdown with the cables for each of the exercises in this giant set, I'm looking for 12 to 15 reps or to failure. Usually I go one to two reps below the failure point since there are three exercises in this giant set, but do whatever you have left in you as far as energy. Also, yes, this is an older video. I goofed on my phone and didn't record the, the tricep pushdown, but this is the exercise. The last exercise in the giant set is an easy bar curl. So I'm choosing a weight that's definitely lighter than my normal bar curls because I wanna be hitting at least 15 reps of these. I'm also going very slow or as slow as I can on the negative of the movement, again, to fully stretch the muscles and put time under tension. So this is the exercise that wraps up that giant set. I repeated the giant set twice. So, two times of each exercise. All right, so that workout from last night, it was excellent. Really good pump, and I left feeling so much better. I went into that workout feeling really tired <laughs> and out of it, and like it wasn't going to be good. It was late at night, but I went through it, and... I'm always glad I do because I left feeling really good. If you found that walkthrough helpful or if you like the workout, check out the other workouts in the bulk series. I have them all uploaded weeks one, two, and three on my website. I'll be uploading workouts every weekend so you can see what the training split was, everything I did, all the sets, and kind of get some inspiration or try some new things to implement or try the exact workouts that you saw in the videos. If you're liking the bulk series, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me and feel free to leave any comments or questions that you might have. All right, that's gonna wrap up episode eight. Thanks for watching, thanks for all the love and support and I'll talk to you soon. I know my goal, I know what I'm working towards. I wanna get big.